I'm Evan O'Calley and I'm here outside the Irish Heather uh, in Gastown, downtown Vancouver and I'm going to head in and meet with Sean Heather, a Limerick man who, who owns and runs the pub here. So my name is Sean Heather, um, I was born in Toronto in 66, I moved to Ireland when I was five father's from Dublin, my mother's from Newfoundland. Uh, my dad at the time felt like there was a revolution, a civil war going to erupt in Ireland and he wanted to be there. He thought he should be there, not here. And plus, he'd been in Canada for 12 years and they were pushing him to get a proper passport. In those days, you had to swear an oath of allegiance to the Queen, which <laughs> he wasn't interested in doing. So uh, we ended up being brought up in Ireland. In, in Ireland, it, it when I was there, the unemployment was... I want to say unemployment was up into the 22% or something, something ridiculous. Wow. Uh, this is what, the this 80s? This is the 80s, yeah, yeah, 85, 86 kind of thing. Um, and so, and I did, I, I just, school just wasn't for me. Like, I, I do, uh, I do anything for you. And I would be on, on live television at the age of 17, and then I'd be struggling to give a shit about doing my homework kind of thing, yeah. you know what I mean? And so, it was hard for me to uh, focus on school when I wasn't particularly good at it. Um, so I ended up with a leaving certificate, probably as classed as a fail, uh, leaving certificate, um, and very little prospect of a job, and got lucky to get into Ryanair, uh, where they didn't seem to be lucky. They were looking for a personality. They were looking for somebody who fit the bill of the uh, this young, sort of uh, aggressive, um, sort of can-do kind of person that they wanted for their company. But the Gulf War struck, and uh, I got let go. All the assistant chair managers of the K of the different departments got the heave ho, right. and I was one of those guys. And so uh, I ended up with uh, no job, um, four thousand euro or punts, four thousand punts, <laughs> severance package, and uh, O'Leary himself was the guy that gave me the gave me the push. And uh, so I had some kind words from him, <laughs> and uh, I was sort of uh, at a crossroads in my life. And uh, you know, after being let go, I sort of sat around, looked at my options, and Canada was beckoning, and uh, I had a sister out here, and uh, I got a one-way flight to Vancouver, which is where she was. She was going to be here for two weeks, and she was moving back to Ontario, and uh, I got off the plane with $50, $50 in my pocket, and my sister had paid the rent for the month, so I had two, two weeks with her and two weeks after she was right, gone. And, uh, I had to, it was sure to get off the pot, I had to do some work uh, yeah. quickly. Yeah, so I couldn't, didn't have any money, um, very little money, and I was a young man, and uh, I opened it up in Gastown, because Gastown at the time was uh, a developing neighborhood, it still is, as you've seen yourself, but at that time it was everywhere. And uh, we had a tough time, because the minute we opened, uh, People were scared away from the drug dealers that were outside the door. But we had to stake our claim yeah. down here for a, a part of the street that they weren't going to trade on just so that our customers could walk into the place unmolested kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. And that was tough. Uh, so no amount of cheap rent uh, really makes sense. So it was it touch was and go for a while because people just wouldn't park down here because their car would be broken into wow. and they just wouldn't uh, get a taxi down here because they couldn't get a taxi back out of the neighborhood again kind of thing. So. It, it certainly more than a few times thought I'd made a mistake, you know, like, and, and uh, what the hell are we going to do? And it, the neighborhood was just beating us. And then eventually we got the upper hand on it, you know, so, um, but it was a tough go for a while. Um, I was trying to show that an alternative view of Ireland, I was trying to show uh, a viewpoint that was about positive image, uh, correct the sort of negative image. The most Canadians would have had the viewpoint that Irish people were drunks. Mm -hmm. We brawled in the streets openly, and that we weren't brawling, we were trying to kill each other kind of thing. And, and uh, you know, I, I opened up a pub that I believed was authentic. I don't, I don't have TVs. You have to talk to each other. We pour a proper pint. Um, the lines are only eight feet long. Um, the Guinness, we, you know, do a crack at least a keg a day on the weekends, two kegs on the weekends, on Paddy's Day it's 20 kegs, like <laughs> that kind of thing. So, you know, we really pr pride ourselves on brewing the proper pint. It's amazing too, if you set out your stall on, 
on that sort of trying to be off, doing uh, things as authentic as you can and doing a proper pint and just stick with it. It wins people over and you start to get people coming back for those basic notes that okay. they may be identified with when they, they were visiting an uncle back in Ireland or an aunt or a grandparent or something like that and they understood why, why does a pint take so long to pull, you know, this kind of yeah, thing. And they yeah, yeah. This is the way it's done. It's done yeah. the same way here kind of thing, you know. So yeah. uh, we also, you know, we don't decorate for St. Patrick's Day. We don't put green down in our beer. And the, a lot of people don't understand it. We don't do um, car bomb shooters, which was another thing, too. It's like, uh, you know, I used to say to people, would you go to a New York and ask for a 9-11 shooter? Probably not. So oh. we come into the Irish Center and ask for a car bomb shooter when there's people working here who, myself included, who I been in, I, in London I was... Uh, a half a block away when the Blues and Royals were blown up by the IRA when they detonated a car bomb. Not really interested in, in perpetuating that and selling you a car bomb shooter for the sake of making a few bucks. That was what I was trying to do. I was just trying to give people an alternative viewpoint to the sectarian violence and things like that that were being shown on the... On there was no good news stories about Ireland. There was never anything good to report as far as CBC was concerned. Yeah, yeah so... The key is having them near each other. Uh, if they were in different parts of the, of the city or different parts of the province, uh, it would logistically be too much of a challenge. So having them all close together makes sense. Having so many businesses far apart yeah, yeah. would be a logistical nightmare. Plus, um, I, can, I can walk to any of the businesses yeah. and nobody knows I'm coming. So the element yeah, of surprise yeah. is with me. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I, I would say uh, that, that don't think it's going to happen quickly. Don't be looking for the, the, the quick sort of uh, result to get rich quick scheme. Okay. The truth is uh, y you need to accept the fact that you're going to be working long hours. You need to accept the fact that you're going to be uh, under a lot of stress and, and, and pressure. And you need to like that kind of thing too, you know, like it's not... And when you put the hours in and do that, it may take three years to, ta to catch, it may take six months to catch, yeah. but it certainly won't catch quickly if you're not putting the hours in and you're not working. So you just have to be, be willing to do that. But the other thing is that I always say to young people to think outside the box. You know, like it, I love the whole gastropub notion that lots and lots of young people were training in Michelin star restaurants like yourself, and they're being told all the time, you, know, you can't be lent money till you're in your 40s, you can't won't be old enough to do this and a lot of people young people came out and said screw that uh, taking over a pub that's going out of business it's got a small kitchen it's a beautiful big room it's a nice pub room or whatever and I'm going to do my style food in that thing and it became the gastro pub that we know today and so you know a lot of young people have been able to jump by 10 years to where they should have been in, in, in the way society would have viewed that they should be and so young people like dream those dreams um, and, and think, don't listen to older people like me telling you not to do it, you can't do it, because we, we're, we're protecting our turf, you know? Yeah. So I would say every time, like, don't let oh, the old ways keep you, push you down. Do what you want to do and believe in what you want to believe in. And at the end of the day, if you're given, given a good product at a good price, delicious, and you're real, then you're going to be successful. <laughs>